Centuries ago, the Malian Emperor Mansa Musa sent his best and brightest scholars, explorers, warriors, and artisans across the great western ocean to discover new lands. They succeeded in ways no one could have imagined. Now, 3,000 years later, their descendants live and thrive on the planet of Vutoa, with plenty to learn and explore on their new home, and the Hapalox and the Landed threatening Vutoa from afar. The calls of adventure and discovery are stronger than ever. Join creative director Tanya DePass as Invicta, the High and Old Blade Keeper. DJ Knight as Akemba, the Musalian Bio Priest. Michael Sinclair II as Eli, the Misajai Lightbringer. Christina Ariel as Sila 919, the Monsagene Bio Priest. Gabe Hicks as Doring, the Salansi Packmaster and Eugenio Vargas as the storyteller, as they explore new planets, make new friends, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. Welcome to The Motherlands. And we're live. Hello. Hello! Sorry, I hit the wrong button. Hi, everybody! Hi! Welcome in. Happy oh, no, Wednesday. We Oh, well, I'm going to I'm going to vamp until then, because here we are. Welcome back. It's episode four. It is the penultimate episode of the first half of season four. How's that? I love a penny epi. Uh, oh I'm Eugenio. I am DM Jazzyens. I am your storyteller for this season. Uh, we are back. And you know what? We're going to do things slightly out of order today since we have a couple of cast members uh, having some tech issues. And I will start by saying welcome back. And we want to take a moment to thank the folks uh, who made it, us, it made it possible for us to be here this evening. Oh, yeah. uh, first on that list are DJ's eyebrows. Uh, <laughs> there they go. There they go. <laughs> he thought I wasn't watching him do it, but I was. I was. Uh, next, after the eyebrows, we, of course, have to... <laughs> Still going. We have to thank Logitech for Creators, a really amazing organization that uh, just is doing so much for creators out there in general. They are partnered with Blue Microphones, sent us uh, a whole new set of beautiful Sona microphones, which you can see featured here. DJ is caressing just a little bit with the cheek. Yeah, yeah, that. They're nice microphones. Thank you, Logitech for Creators. Uh, you can go to bluemic.com to check out my, uh, Blue Mic's uh, uh, selections, and of course, navigate on over to Logitech for Creators as well. Next up, Die Hard Dice. We are still partnered with them. We are still putting our dice out there, and of course, they got tons of good stuff for you. So you can go to dieharddice.com slash Vitoa. That's slash V-U-T- OA to get a little discount at the end of your order. Full disclosure, we get a little bit of that too. Uh, so, you know, win-win kind of situation. Dieharddice.com slash Vatoa. Go check out their wares. Next up, we want to thank Voice Mod that gives me the uh, wonderful ability to be able uh, to speak as if I am Major, Major, Major Rafia. Whenever I feel like it. Uh, Voicemod.net to check out their service uh, and get yourself a little uh, free demo version. Check it out. See what you think before you upgrade to their pro license. Voicemod.net. Thank you so much for supporting Into the Motherlands. And of course, last but certainly not least, just like every week, we want to thank Twitch. Twitch has uh, made these seasons possible. They continue to ask us to come back, and we are so grateful uh, for their support and their faith in this project. Uh, we are using, once again this week, we are using Twitch's relatively new feature called Guest Star, which allows streamers to pull other uh, streamers and other Twitch accounts into their streams pretty easily and seamlessly. A little URL link, a little source, and there you go. Uh, so thank you to Twitch, uh, and thanks for letting us use Guest Star for the show. All right, we're still down a couple of cameras, but I have faith. In the meantime, why don't we uh, go around and introduce the folks that you can currently see and hear on the stream. Why don't we start this with DJ? Oh, hi, it's me, DJ. I really do like my blue sonar microphone, uh, as referenced by Michael's face and Tanya's laughter. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you for coming to hang out with us. I am playing Akimba, the Mosalian bio priest. You are awesome. Our pronouns are he, him. Thank you for coming to hang out with us for the show. Thank you. A good reminder, because I missed that in my Oops, We're Missing Folks. My pronouns are also he, him. Uh, the various NPCs that I play, of course, will catch their pronouns as we go. Uh, next up, let's go over to Michael. Hello, 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 hello. My name is Michael Sinclair II. I go by Michael Critz everywhere. I play Eli, the Misajai Lightbringer. My pronouns are he, him. Their pronouns, Eli, they, them. 
Um, and yeah, that is us, them, all around. Oh, there's everybody, except not. Almost, but not quite. We have a Christina with us uh, now. So Christina, why don't you head on next? Hi, I'm Christina Ariel, and I play the Monsignor Bio Priest, Captain Silo 919. And um, as my, I would say to my son, let's get the sillies out. Let's play this game. <laughs> get the sillies out by playing the game, not before we play the game, just to be clear. Yeah. During the game. <laughs> I got, yeah, I mean, I assumed. Uh, all right, I believe we cannot see our wonderful uh, Salansi, but I believe we can hear him. Gabe, yes. you want to you give us uh, an intro? I am your disembodied voice. I'm Gabe Hicks, <laughs> Gabe James Games across all platforms. And today I will be your ASMR Salansi. <laughs> it's everything I've ever wanted, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I love it. And last but certainly not least, uh, Tanya. Hi, I'm Tanya Cypher Tier. Uh, your high and old blade keeper. It took me a minute. I'm tired. Yeah. Um, Listen, we got a bunch of characters, a bunch of different systems. It's a lot to keep track of. Yeah, and it's it's been a long day. Uh, high and old blade keeper, Invicta, pronouns for both of us are she, her. All right. That is everybody. Uh, last week, y'all y'all got some stuff done last week. It took a little while to to, you know, get through that portal but once you did you made your way who wants to give us uh who wants or at least start giving us a little recap of last week <laughs> i'm Michael? sure that you were gonna start dj and then you, nope. you took a breath and then you went no nah. no it's, I, it's all I michael think about it michael. and i remember that michael takes the most fantastic notes that could ever exist in the game so there's no earth in which i can say a thing i'd be like oh we were in a room we got out of the room and then Michael will be like, oh, we found the specific puzzles, and then we did these three specific things. DJ, just give it a try. Research. Just give it a, just give it a try. Yeah. Just, you know, no, I, I literally just said it. Just a little like, bit. We were in a room. He, did. he actually did, yeah. We got out of a room. You did. Uh -huh. I mean. That was uh, it. Yeah. All right. So, you know, to expound on DJ's brilliance, um, uh, yeah. So, I mean, basically, we got into a room. We were trying to do a whole bunch of portal shenanigans. We couldn't figure out what the portal shenanigans were. We tried to, you know... <laughs> Uh, approach it as uh, logically as we could, but it really just ended up with us jumping through it. Um, we got into that room. Uh, we saw some of the Batantus who were hurt and then the Batantu who were not, both um, Akimba and Captain Silent 919 ended up doing the Dragon Ball Z, like uh, the, the, the transformation thingy to help out um, both the patients, uh, which I believe they were successful in getting them more stable than they were, uh, but not completely out of the weeds as far as being hurt. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, Invicta, they, or she, um, end up finding some sort of oh, yeah. uh, artifact. I will not be explaining why I'm green. It is ironically I, completely unrelated to this. Amazing. I have a question, Gabe. I will not be explaining. I have a question. Just uh -huh. one. Mm -hmm. Is it easy being green? <laughs> Stop. <you>. Michael, go. <laughs> okay, so uh, Invicta found uh, an artifact uh, that we haven't quite figured out what uh, what we're doing with it, but it, it did let us know that it was an artifact of high and all, um, uh, ancestry, and it had mm -hmm. some sort of blood that we couldn't identify that was somewhat perhaps... Uh oh, I'm getting spinnies on both cipher. And, oh, I think uh, you're good. You're uh, we can okay. still hear and see you fine on my end. Perfect. So, so uh, we we found out the blood didn't really necessarily belong to uh, something that was identified yet, but stemmed from Heinel. And then from there, uh, my character um, Eli ended up finding a way to using one of my abilities. We're able to uh, find a way to um, figure out how to make a pathway outside of this this maze network system um, and not get fried like the people who got care from Ikemba and Captain Silent 919. Um, I think that's kind of the majority of it. We're, and then at the at the very end, we we got out of the cave mouth and we found that we were... Well, now, hold on a second, because that's not like downplay Eli's contribution to getting out of the labyrinth. Did you mention what you found already at the beginning? 
uh, we found these prongs. We found some yeah. sort of like prong we, thingies. You found the prongs, I lie. <laughs> Sorry, I for some reason it's a it's a it's a message eye thing. Okay, I'm just gonna say it's a message eye thing. <laughs> you got awesome. so much beings that you got to meld within yourself that I've just melded with you know I lie. So I love it. I love me, it. Okay, fair enough. The royal, we're royal. <laughs> the royal, I okay. I love me, the royal. Me, me absolutely. and I lie are royalty because we. <laughs> We found the prongs that were there. This is great. Therefore, um, you know, those were the prongs that were indicating that that was some sort of force field that we shouldn't go there because then we'll get, you know, burned, fried, or something mm -hmm. or the other. And uh, because we were able to suss that out, um, we could safely navigate through the maze and get to the mouth of the opening of the cave. And then we found that we were transported very far north in the place called uh, someplace, Alabaster Tower of the City of Hollands. We is. found that we were the outside of that. That's, uh, you know, I think that's a good place so we can get the game going. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what happened. That was great, absolutely. So you all did indeed find yourselves. Uh, so you will recall, and, and this is a perfect place to start, uh, you'll recall that uh, you all exited this cave after you sort of figured this maze out. You exited and you didn't know where you were for a moment. You turned around and you saw uh, Halins floating above you. Um, I We were close to the end yesterday, so I didn't spend a ton of time describing it, but the city of Halins actually exists in a p on uh, a piece of ground Beyond. that has been Beyond. lifted up uh, out of the, I keep wanting to say the earth, but it's not earth, it's Vatoa, but I don't think Vatoa, anyway. Um, so ground. it is suspended above a big crater uh, with these beautiful alabaster support arches, uh, and then the whole city rests atop this crater. Mm -hmm. So essentially you have walked out of a series of tunnels and caves that as far as you can tell must exist underneath the crater that Hollins floats above. Uh, and you all have come out, turns to the, see the city. Uh, and the only last detail uh, that wasn't mentioned is that as soon as you exited those caves and apparently came back into communicator range or your signals weren't being blocked or whatever, uh, Major Rafia was immediately on the comms with a repeating message trying to get in touch with the six five of you, uh, <laughs> which I like promptly muted, <laughs> which was everything. That's why I didn't bring uh, so, it up because I muted it. I was like, no. <laughs> you were like, you know, I think, I think we shan't. Uh, so that's where we begin. And uh, my, you know, my question is, well, we're not listening to Rafia at the moment, but what are we, doing you all are here outside of Hollins, which is not not where you started and perhaps more to the point not where your transport is um does any i don't think i've well everyone would know oh, how, how did we uh i don't understand what just happened no do i nor do I. Okay, not just me, because I'm not the science-y. Um... Okay, as long as, as long as it's not just me. I believe I understand at a base level what's occurred. It's just I didn't believe we had this sort of technology. That is a really good segue to a thing that I should have said last week, but it now feels like a good time, which is that Akemba is absolutely right. This sort of technology is very much in its infancy and looks nothing like what you just experienced. If we want to talk about instantaneous travel uh, in our setting, uh, and by that I mean our tables setting, right, it is limited. It kind of exists, but it's extremely limited. It's extremely energy uh, uh, expensive, right? It takes a lot of energy to make it work. And the machinery required is enormous. So uh, what, what we, right, players think of as like teleportation or that sort of travel is really very much in its infancy on Vatoa and, and in the sort of torch uh, planetary alliance or whatever it is. I'm going to bring out the item out of my pack just so that we can all, now that we're kind of just trying to logically think about so the, the, what happened, I'm going to bring the item that had caused this to happen. Um, just hold it in front of uh, the three, Ikemba, Invicta, and Silent 919, because they're the more science-y, technology-based folks, and I'm just, I'm carrying things. Um... So this did it. I, we have better lighting. Uh, I don't. 
any of you want to, would this be a good time or should I just put it back in the, okay. I'll, uh, I'll have a look. Okay, let me just get it back out of the pack. Since, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was go. thinking, I'm sorry, I was trying to figure out if it's the thing I wanted to do, but uh, I, at this point, it needs to happen. Sorry. Yeah. I hand it over. Kimba takes it and uh, starts the process of trying to figure out what it is and how it works and how it got us where we are and whether or not uh, this is the same device that he used to turn it on in the first place, yes? Yeah, so at that time when you, I mean, that time you were actively trying to find a way to activate it, you managed to find it, but, you know, it was, it was very, it was largely actually through your sort of bio priest instincts not that this thing is organic mm -hmm. but it wasn't like you were interfacing with it in sort of a language-based way that you could describe right uh and as far as any further functions at least back then you were sort of in a hurry but back then it was eluding you you can certainly have another look this time if you want to toss together a, a pool that probably am, includes well you tell me what it includes i'm gathering dice as we speak trying to Great. make sure that i have the right amount of them because yeah. I have a lot of D8s and... <laughs> good, good. We love D6s. a D8. Trying to get more of them because reasons, but uh, <laughs> working on it for now. All right, so I'm going to roll a truth roll for sure. Yep. Because I like it. I like it. What is this? We got to find out. Uh, repair? Because repair isn't just for fixing. The description says diagnosing uh -huh. and fixing damaged devices and machinery. The diagnosing part comes before you fix anything, and it's not damaged, so he definitely wants to diagnose and figure out what's going on. Yeah. I love that, I love that you're, we've taken this time because the information that you get is going to depend on these, this skill, right? If you use terminal, it would give you different information than repair. So I, I'm glad we're going through this. It's not by, I'm not trying to bypass anything. I right. do kind of want to do the, uh, the custom join, uh, but also... Eh. The like diagnostic scanner is a thing that doesn't count for this, but like, this right? Is, yeah. It seems like it makes more sense. And yeah, I feel like I'm missing a die. A utility well, you've got die. Your D4 is a D4 utility die. Mm -hmm. That's Perfect. it. I may dislike myself very shortly. We'll about, we're about to find out, and I got to figure out whether or not these, all of these dice are going to dice jail or not. Oh, three successes. Nice. Okay. And I got a four on the D4, which is like... Oh, that feels good, right? It the really does. Are, it's 25% it's and they just, you know, it's like you're... But yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Three successes. So with repair. So the first thing that you notice is that this uh, thing appears to be in some sort of like cool down mode. Like you don't think you could activate it again right away. Uh, the next thing that you get a sense of and again this is all sort of right this is field diagnosing right so if you you know have the the technology to get real deep in there but the next thing is that it seems like it is keyed now that you're here it seems like the destination like this device is specifically for this destination you don't think there's a way to reroute the the where this thing takes you or i should say if there is you need way more equipment and way longer to like really get in and investigate the third success i'm gonna say what it it is it is techno and you sort of already know this it is technology unlike anything you have ever seen before but now that you have some time some less fraught time to really sort of look at it and touch it and whatever the materials at least from a quick field scan the materials look native to Vitoa. It looks like the, the materials used to construct it were sourced probably from this planet. Hmm. So it's, at least it's elements were made here. Yeah. And that it's on iron, cool. 
Yeah, but that technology is not anything you've ever seen, certainly on Vitoa, and you've been around, right? I mean, we went to a couple of different moons and planets mm -hmm. and stuff, even just in previous seasons. Nothing. The, certainly, it's not Hothraean tech. It's not land. It's not even. It's not landed tech, right? It's not Hapalock tech. You've at least seen and landed ships and Hapalock, but it's none of that either. So this is interesting because it's something that's, as far as I'm aware, never existed here. This technology is beyond our capability currently, but also. It was made here, on Vitoa. It's on cooldown, so we can't, I'd say something like a cooldown, it's, it's resting. Uh, the energy needed needs to rebuild before using it again, from what I can feel, but it won't get us home because it was keyed specifically to this location. So if we wanted to get back, we would need to find another. I hope that's enough information. It's about what I could gather with the time I've had. Are there any so, questions? Uh, at this point, uh, all of <laughs> all of your comms devices begin emitting like a little uh, alert ping. Uh, and it seems that Rafia has like overrided some functions to try and get your attention. Uh, if any of you were keeping any track of it, like <laughs> she was for sure continuing to send that hailing uh, message after I like muted it. Uh, and now it seems she has escalated things. I bit. thought I only muted it for myself and not for everyone else. Oh, I assumed it was for all because otherwise I would have been sitting here uh, during that whole thing going. Bang. Smiler 919. Invicta, Declender, Eli, Dorting, please respond. And I didn't want to do that. Uh, <laughs> that is very kind of you. Thank you. <laughs> it would have so been awesome, though. To have contacted Rafia, Major Rafia, or would like to now, that's fine. Also, you can continue to ignore her, because I happen to think that's very funny. <laughs> um, I guess I'm going to I'm gonna look at Doring, and because they're they've He's been yeah. with us the whole time. So yeah, just very, just like, you know, taking notes. <laughs> I'm going to slowly look at Doring and then click the responder to be like, okay, we'll, we'll <laughs> listen to Torch now. <laughs> yeah. um, right, so you unmute uh, and you immediately hear uh, uh, Major Rafia going, Are aware that you are now in communicator range. Please respond. Captain Silent 919. We're responding. Yes. Hello. Oh, 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 oh Major yeah. Rodriguez. Yes. Hello. We lost you there for a moment. Status. Did you say Major Rodriguez? Mm -hmm. Status report. I thought I heard Michael say. I thought I said Ma Major Rafia. Diana, I didn't say Rodriguez. Think <laughs> well, uh, in the other case, Major, 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 yes. 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 Uh, yes. I lie. Report. Report. Um, we're near the towers of um, uh, Falins. We are aware of your current current location. Okay. The question is, how did you get there, and is everyone okay? Uh, remember the thing you told us to investigate. Yes, that thing. It activated, um, and then uh, we were trying to get the lost people. The lost, uh, uh, the lost folks. We broke the fourth. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, we are trying to get them. Uh, and the only way we could do so was to go through because we tried rope. And anyway, we went through <laughs> it. We helped them. We got out out of the cave system. And now we're at the, a cave opening nearby Harlands, which you clearly see. Um, update. Appreciate it, I like. Thank you. A transport has been dispatched attached to your location. In addition, another transport was dispatched to the Bitantu outpost post. It seems there were other ships incoming following the one 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 that you mentioned during in your report, the one that followed you all there. The Bitantu are being evacuated. 
We will see you back at headquarters. Hold up. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, if if that one ship was there, is the other ships coming to where we are, or are you not reading that? Not 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 tour ships though, because. Okay. But the additional landed ships appear to have their trajectory set for the Bidonsu outburst. But no one's heading towards us moment at the moment? Not at the moment. Okay. Uh, I will, if they are picking us up and we're going somewhere, I, I am taking over the drive. I, I will inform Orm your pilot, I like. Thank you. Rafia L. I lie out. <laughs> you all, a poor woman. Anyway. Uh, um, yeah, so it sounds like uh, uh, as soon as you all got out, and it's, you know, in the moment, yeah. it makes sense that they were able to figure out where you were once the comm signals started back up. But it does sound like they're sending a transport for you. Things are not great back at the outpost, but they seem to have that under control. You have a little time if there's anything that you would like to do. The city of Hollands is behind you. They'll probably, the transports uh, you all get uh, basically like uh, follow my ride notifications uh, on your devices, and it'll be there uh, in about an hour. Between. Uh, and if there's nothing, we can also. Have them arrive now. I would love to go and see if there's cheese in the city oh, yeah. that we don't have at home. <laughs> yes, I would. I would like to. I've never been to Harlan, so I would, yes. Like maybe something smoked, really fantastic, a nice gouda. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, Invicta, you are from Harlan. Am I right about that? Sure. I think. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I believe you are. Uh, and so as, listen, uh, as Ikemba is, is contemplating uh, Holland, trying Holland's cheeses for the first time, uh, do you have anything to recommend from home? And you know, that home that you remembered you were from more than six minutes ago? <laughs> Sheesh. <clears throat> and Victor just kind of looks at... <clears throat> <laughs> it's it's infectious. <sighs> um, and Victor's like she's been listening to all of this, and she's also just kind of like, none of you are bothered by the fact she just walked like how many miles, and yet we're at my home city. This isn't normal. Like, oh. and y'all just want to go buy cheese? Well, in Victor, um, I or a hollandaise get... sauce. <laughs> you don't even eat. Um, be quiet. I um, I would like to say that while it is unsettling that we've come here, essentially teleporting, it's also out of our control. I would much rather focus on the things that I can control than to be upset about the things that I can't. So since I can control getting cheese. I would love it if you could recommend some. Mm. Are there smoked varieties here? Like, what what types of cheeses would you recommend? Where can I get a good salad? Um, all the things. And I actually just like pull up my communicator, start tapping buttons, and pull up like the Holland's Visitor Bureau. For <laughs> I was ready for you to pull up Holland's Seamless. <laughs> <laughs> we in a hurry. They'll bring it to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no good today. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'll take you. I may regret this, but if we're going to go to Holland's anyway, we can stop by my parents' place. Oh. Yeah, oh I do have the light. Surely, mm. but it's not every day you get to have a friend recommend go into their parents' house. So thank you. Uh, it is not customary to invite people to your parents' homes. I'll say that much. So thank you very much. And there's nothing to regret. Well, considering that my mother has been bothering me to come visit, especially since Torch took us off duty for a while, and we're here now, if she knows I was within a hundred meters of Hollands and didn't stop by, 
I'll never hear the end of it. Ah, uh, that sounds like a typical mother move. I, I understand. Yeah. I'll just message her and let her know we're on the way and that there should be cheese. And and I just kind of turned to Sila. What should I have her make ready for you? May I talk to you for a moment, Invicta? Microchips. Oh! I'm done. I ain't coming back. Deborah tells us the story of the old earth legend of Bizarro. And in the town of Bizarro, all things are slightly shifted. So what we could be meeting is a Bizarro version of your mother. And Invicta's whole countenance changes. And right you know. when her countenance changes, Akemba just kind of like walks toward Captain, and like puts his hand on her shoulder and just like, Captain, would you mind walking with me for a moment? I love all the asides that we're having today. This is great. I just want to say that I find it hard to believe that we have presumably time traveled or shifted or teleported, but it's so far fetched to believe that we could not have teleported to a version of the land that looks exactly the same, but just a bit different. Deborah yes, speaks yes. to us about this all the time, about how you expand your mind to understand these moments and what could possibly happen? It wouldn't be the strangest thing that's ever happened to us. Think about it. I've got an idea, and this is slightly out of character, and I want to ask permission before I do it. Mm. Speaking Never of looking more the, excited. Speaking of looking the same and acting different, as Ikemba turns, <laughs> this is out of joke. character. This is not <laughs> in character. Um, as Ikemba turn Silo away to try to counsel her to kind of stop this line of reasoning. I want to sneak up behind her, just walk up behind her. And because it's been a while and we know each other and I've run diagnostics on Sila at some point, I want to deactivate her so we can carry her and get her to look at the lab and all lens. But I want to ask permission because it would be a, a not, it would be a, a thing that, if Victor wants to do regardless, the taking of agency and you want to be respectful. Correct. I'll allow it. I don't I can't think of a better way for you to have said given your consent. I'll allow it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. <laughs> very Mills Lane of you. <laughs> I mean exactly. you could have you could have said no, I'm just checking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh I Let's don't really <laughs> feel uh, I don't particularly feel the need to uh, have you roll for it since we have uh, Silas' consent. Uh, so, yeah, that can be a thing that happens. So I just kind of catch Ikemba's eye and I'm like... But as Deborah says... We have to find a way and a path. I just to move I just forward. walk behind them and I jab her right in the uh, right in the off button, which which find is definitely more complicated to get to than it sounds. It does, but I'm a high and all. Yeah, yes, Sila. Um, what am I writing down? Her name is not Gladys. It's Deborah. <laughs> Deborah. <laughs> okay. Great. I just got to keep that call leader. I mean, oh, no. uh, call Gladys. leader. They both run the. They both run the retreat. Oh, it's, it's both Deborah of it's Deborah and Gladys. and Gladys. Great. I'm just updating my notes. They're the mm. two aunties. Okay. Understand that the cake is a lie, and that Sila <laughs> is right. So Sila drops. Oh. Uh, I can't and, and, Yeah, Akemba and Invictus seem to have been somewhat aware that that was going to happen. I don't know about Doring and and Eli. No. <laughs> I saw that happen. I was like, mm hmm, mm hmm. <laughs> All right, Doring. We, we must run diagnostics on her immediately. This is concerning. But oh. why, you have just shut down your companion. On yes. Purpose? Yes. She's been acting weird. Define weird. She. This whole Doris tells you and Gladys says that's not normal. She's usually no. very forthcoming and bossy this is but not isn't that evolution no. not not that fast no 
no the evolution oh, of well. cybernetics is increasingly faster than it is for okay most there's flesh there's organic. evolution and then there's viruses there's something wrong with her mm. whatever you have a social experience that is not based on research so we can just go off of that um and wally kemba is carrying her i've called for a transport um, to take me and Sila to the nearest university. Yeah. And then um, I've also called home to tell my parents. Long story. I'm at Holland's. I'm sending some friends over. Please give the tall, muscular man cheese. Just, just give him some smoky cheese. <laughs> He's, they're my friends. Just, just give them cheese. I don't know what Doring eats. Just give him, he's a plant. Just give him something. I don't know. I like and explain what they want themselves. I'll explain when I get there. Just, it's a long story. And I just cut off communications. Oh, I'm sure they love that. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, oops. So I lost the window while I was looking up the name of the archive, which is attached to the main, the, the central university of Hollins. Uh, the archive is called Primat Bay. Uh, so the university that's attached there is probably where you would want to head. And I believe mm -hmm. actually is where you studied, as I recall from a previous season. Um, so uh, yeah, so Sila and Invicta will head that way. Is everyone else heading to the, I don't know Invicta's last name, Invicta's parents' house? I don't know if I gave her her name. I we'll don't, maybe. We don't have them in Motherlands. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> is everyone else heading over that way? Is anybody else doing anything else uh, that the, I should be aware of as we mm, split the party? The place that we ended up, does it look like it's a place that people commonly walk around? The like place where, where you came out? No. You can see where not far away, I mean, it's not steps away, but like within eyeshot is one of the lifts uh, that takes you across the support and into the city. Um, but the place where you are, no, there's like no trails here. There's no paths. It's not frequented by uh, sentience. Can I look around to make sure there's not a dead drop or something around here? Yeah. Uh, yes. Give me a pool to look around and notice things. Uh, can I use awareness for that? I love that. Absolutely. You can. Awareness. Um exploration for sure for the value that's pretty much all i got okay and a d4 utility because yeah. i don't think we have any gear to bump that but at least yep. you get it that is a three three successes all right man y'all are rolling well too. i ju i just roll poorly in dice pool games i guess <laughs> i only roll things that i'm good at <laughs> yeah, well, that's fair. That's All right, three quiet. successes. Um, so you look around for a while, and it doesn't, it really doesn't look like anyone's been anywhere near her for a while. However, cool. uh. <laughs> however, what you do find are some older markings. Mm -hmm. um, you're sort of, you know, you're looking around and since you're looking, since you mentioned that you're specifically looking for a dead drop or something like that, right? We're not just surfacing, we're looking under things, we're looking in, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, bushes and things to make sure there's not. And so what you find is a series of what look like little stone pylons or the remains, I should say, mm -hmm. of little stone pylons. And you kind of see them... Some of them are missing. They're not evenly spaced out. Uh, they're different sizes because they've all, you know, eroded differently over the years. But they seem to kind of generally, with three successes, be heading to like in a in a sort of semicircle that heads back towards the crater mm -hmm. of Hollins. Cool. I'll take pictures and then I'll just uh, yeah. pass that along. Uh, and I will do a brisk jog over to the people we left back in the cave to tell them the situation oh, yeah. of what's going on. Uh -huh. And uh, we'll send some torch folks over to, you know, uh, get them get them out of there and, and let them know of their location. Uh, yeah, so you want them to just basically stay in the cave is where you're sending people to look for them? Yeah, because, yeah, there's no point of us taking them out, taking all that time where, like, 
you know, the the less you can we can move them, the better. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. The uh, the, the one that didn't walk into a dangerous force field. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. And I also give them the pathway, obviously. <laughs> yes. And they, uh, you know, take notes diligently. Uh, and then, are are you going to leave that? Should we be concerned about the torch? I mean, your torch. I know you're very obviously very capable, but are they going to? Should we leave a? Should I know? You, they'll they'll come here. Um, I'll instruct them on how to get to you. Oh, okay. just in case you need to, I don't know, relieve yourself, go out yeah. for uh, get some air. I mean, I've been doing that in the corner, but yeah. <laughs> don't. Uh, it's not sanitary. They just. Uh, I mean, neither is walking into a force field. But now I know. So yeah, I mean, I'll go outside now. Yeah. You okay? We're, yeah, we're I'm okay. great. We're, thinking, I, we're we're great. Thank you. Listen, I, thank gonna, you. I don't know if I said that, but thank you. I'm gonna go. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I, one of my favorite things is conversations with Eli and a stranger. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know why Eli doesn't like straight. We're a community, but like the if the community good, Eli's like we good. I'm good. Yeah, no, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, anything else before we head into Hollins? All right, let us begin then. Oh, maybe. No, good. Okay, that's a thumb. Uh, let us then. Aha, we have a, do we have a silo back, perhaps? You know what, let's start with the trip to the parents. Um, so you all go to an older, you all uh, take, you know, Invicta sort of sends you uh, to an older quarter uh, of Hollins, uh, one of the original sort of residential areas of the city. Um, most of you would know sort of the basic history of Hollins, which is that it's one of the oldest cities on Vatoa. Um, it was originally built by the Hyenol. Uh, of course, most cities throughout Vatoa now uh, aren't specifically for a particular uh, culture or species or anything like that. But originally, when the Hyenol were uh, one of the few sentient races on Vatoa, they founded uh, Hollins or the original version of Hollins. That was also long before uh, the suspension uh, and all of that. Uh, but this is one of the original residential neighborhoods, uh, sort of pink stone, uh, pink light pink stone uh, dwellings, all all up and down these fairly narrow streets, uh, and you head to wherever it is that Invicta, you know, guides you. And there is zero doubt in your mind which dwelling belongs to Invicta's parents because they are outside with, uh, with food in various plates and trays and gigantic hyenol smiles on, uh, just, look, just watching the streets as people come up and down. And every time there's somebody that they don't recognize, they're clearly like looking for a big muscular person or like counting how many there are to see if it's the right number. Uh, but you all spot them before they spot you. Um, I think this is that. Is, is, does that look uh, Kimba? Is, does I, that... I get the feeling that's them. Okay. <clears throat> and Kimba walks up and uh, says, hello, my name is Akimba. I believe uh, Invicta requested our... Yes, it, yes, 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 of course, come right in, come right in. Uh, and and uh, this is, uh, that was that was her, her father uh, who like, you know, pushes his glasses back up onto his, uh, up on his snout. And says, Please come right in uh, and holds out an enormous tray of like, uh, but there, it's very clearly cheese, but also very clearly like he doesn't know about cheese, so he just got a bunch of different cheese. Uh, so there's all kinds of stuff. Some of it's very nice. Some of it is like sliced American, Vatoan, whatever. Uh, but he's very excited about it and sort of showing it to you, Ikemba, as he leads you inside. Uh, uh, Invictus' mother turns to you, Doring, and Eli and says, uh, oh, he was very excited to finally be able to meet you. It's lovely to meet both of you. Won't you please come in? Uh, thank you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent. Come. It's so good to see uh, Invictus doing so well and such such lovely friends. Please come, come right in and leads you inside. And th you, this, hmm. There is no doubt in your mind that a couple of nerds live here when you walk in this house. There are, I mean, every room 
has at least two bookshelves, right? You walk by a, a small little, like, what was very clearly once a second, potentially in Victor's bedroom, uh, that's now, like, a little home lab, uh, like, engineering lab. Um, you see one you see one room that just like has caution tape across it. Uh, and and uh, it can be, you see it first uh, and you're being led by her father. And she's oh, don't, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't, definitely don't go in there. It needs a few days to air out. It's gonna be totally fine. Very exciting research. Definitely don't go in there now though. Um, well, I, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Kimba. Oh, it is a yes, of course. To meet you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. My name is Tanya, what's his name? <laughs> she, <laughs> the father. <laughs> <laughs> His name is the father? No, no, no. Oh. Um, <laughs> so, because the apple did not fall far from the tree, and he'd really of hoped course. kind of for a boy when she was born, his name is Invictus. Oh, good. So he, oh, why do you do this to me? Your cousin's also named Invictus. It's a family name. Yes, right. starting with I and V. Look, this is their branch of the family. I will think of a surname between next now and next week. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Now, somebody is inevitably going to be cruel to me and ask me your mother's name, too. So you got anything on um, deck for that one? <laughs> Notice I, I called gonna... them out ahead of time just to, you know, make them feel bad about it when they ask. Hey. <laughs> well, uh, not game. As a, as a callback to uh, Rivals, her name is Celise. Oh, that's oh. fun. I like that. And also, I will oh, remember yeah. it. Oh. <laughs> Uh, great. So, Ikemba, you introduce yourself. And he says, oh, oh, of course, I'm Invictus. Very easy to remember. Also her cousin's name, my nephew. Also kind of her name. Really thought she was going to be a boy. Totally fine, though. There's, yes, there's no issues with that. It's, it's, it's been great. Um, so you all are brought and you are, there is a spread in the kitchen, uh, not just cheese, but all sorts of foods. They begin to sort of introduce you to some of them, some Halin's delicacies, some specifically, uh, high and old culture dishes. Um, and, and they just pepper you with questions about Invicta. Uh, I pretend to read the scientific high and old. Now, see, you think that that's going to save you from conversation, I lie. But as soon as Invictus notices that you are reading literally anything in this house, he comes over to you and is like, oh, what do you think? I have read this several times. And here's the thing in chapter four and just starts going about whatever you are reading. I was looking at the perfume ad. That's what I was. <laughs> just for the record, I lie, there are not perfume ads in high and old scientific magazines. They're musk you... ads. Uh... Well, that. Wait I call that wrongfully perfume, but it is yes, musk. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. We have an energy today, y'all, and I don't know what's happening. Um, great. It's lovely is what it is. Great. So uh, the three of you have a, have a lovely chat with uh, Invicta's parents, and I want to come back to you, but I do want... Ah, oh, I thought we had it. I saw Christine was back, and I was ready to hop over to that. Um, this is a weird conversation for Dording. I can hear you now. Oh, great. Okay, good to know. Go ahead, Dording. Finish your sentence. It's a I'll weird conversation for Dording. I've known that person for four hours. Yeah. <laughs> And yet they expect you to be able to answer all of their questions fluently. Yeah. How's oh, that yeah. water doing? With fur. I... <laughs> With I can, fur. I well, can that's tell good. You, you know all of the statistical data about her, but I don't know and if don't, anything oh, otherwise. Every time they go to speak to Doring, the camera just kind of like <laughs> intercepts and just <laughs> like, <clears throat> Doring is very new to our party. Uh, he doesn't know as much about, it, about Invicta. As we it's do. Like, so, oh, it's, no, like no, having no. A, it's having a merc in your friend's family's house. <laughs> right. like, what do I do? No, no, no. Uh, don't let, don't let uh, Akimba lie. Uh, Doring and Invicta got very close, very quick. Ask all I, the questions. I, I, not, like, I would not listen to ahead. the jokes that are coming out of Eli right now. That, that, it's hilarious to us. Not the same. I'm confused. Akimba is laughing in the face because yeah, oh yeah, no the I... idea that Ally is saying like, nah, Doring and Victor got super tight. Akimba's like, 
Where did that happen? <laughs> no, no. I'm trying to dodge the conversations happening, and I love me some tea. I so barely that's what any of you. I I have known you for four hours when we had to shoot down people. I do not know what you're. We have so much notes on us. You surely you must know. Yes, those notes tell me about who you are biologically and kind of socially. I'm so and... sorry. I don't mean to interrupt any sort of group dynamics, but did you say shoot? Yes. We'll cut there it's... and head over to a Dixon <laughs> again, Sila. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So, uh, Invicta, you have you load up Sila nine one nine onto your transport uh, and yeah. head to uh, presumably the, the some of the engineering research labs at the university at Primat Bay. Um, yes. Great. Um, Tell me more. So I'm I'm kind of going purposefully. You know, there are people like, oh, Invicta, what are you doing here? And it's like. Emergency can't talk to just, just people that I didn't even like when I was in college or university. Um, and I'm going straight to the engineering bay that I used as a grad student. And I, I get Sila kind of set, you know, st start plugging her in to run diagnostics and look for what must clearly be a virus, something wrong in her software. And I'm just kind of debating if I should have like restrained her or not but i realized if i did unless i use like really strong restraints she could break out of them she might be mad when she comes to but her off switch has been hit so until i wake her up in theory she shouldn't wake up in theory i in love theory. your theory craft uh yeah absolutely uh and you i mean you know you maybe get a couple of glance curious glances but uh you know i don't i don't think anybody stops you is there are you looking to just run use the university's equipment or are you looking for someone to assist you um if someone comes in and asks what i'm doing and i recognize them i may ask them to show me um help me get into the deeper protocols because i'm sure as an alumni i wouldn't have that much access uh-huh uh -huh. but right. um i am yeah. looking for something out of the ordinary some subroutine that's running that shouldn't let me, let's see if anyone, and if so, who comes, oh, I need a third one, uh, who comes by while you're working. Uh, in the meantime, <clears throat> I'm going to start a dice pool. Yeah, and since you're using, I mean, you, like I said, you're familiar with the university, you went to school here, maybe not in engineering necessarily, but mm -hmm. you went to school here. Um, and so using their equipment, I mean, it's, it's listen, it's Holland's equipment. Uh, so that's going to be a D8 utility die instead of a D4 when you're putting Ooh. that pool together. Um, uh, for, well, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate. So uh, neutrally, uh, nobody comes by at least for the first little while that you are in there running diagnostics on Sila. Okay. Um, I'm going to use a pool of information. Makes sense. And science. So that's going to be 2d6 and 2d8. Like it. And then a third d8, right, for your... Or is that including the d8 utility? Um, that is including the utility because my science okay. is a d8 and a d6. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And my information is a d6 until we d6. get more points. Right, right, right. Uh, what am I trying to get? Uh, oh, this is, well, for every success that you get, I'll give you a little bit more, but in order to really find anything, you're going to need at least a DR2. Okay. A DL2, sorry. Uh, oh, no, that's a seven. I thought I failed. Oh. Um, I only got two out of four dice. I only okay, you did get two. All right. Um, so you are looking through there, and Sila, tell us something that Invicta would find about your new personality. Uh, this should be something fairly uh, not deeply hidden. <laughs> that smile. <laughs> what you got for us, Sila? You are muted, I think, in guest star. She's not. It'd be hilarious if the whole time that, like, every time Invicta goes to like touch something on Sila, she just goes no. <laughs> it's no. Just, no. <laughs> and it's like an air noise, like that's just her, like air noise that comes out of like a no. <laughs> so, 
I will say what you will notice is that when you pop open the back panel of Sila's neck, which is right by the off switch, it's like one of those kids' toys where you got to get a little tiny screwdriver and open up the back, but there's just that one little tiny little screw and then this little door. So, <laughs> dooring. So when you open the door, there's just a little, I don't want to, you know what, we'll go old school with this. So think about like a little like disc, like your old yeah. disc drive on your computer. <laughs> so it's like a little tiny, little micro disc. And I could have just been like, oh, the one that you put in your camera. But yeah, so there's just one of those, just like a micro chip. And it is the programming from Gladys and Deborah. And it is just this loop of like positive thinking, it's like, but it's like toxic positive thinking. So it's like just this loop of like their current program that's just been playing over and over and is working its way into her programming. Oh no. Silas so not really Twitter. any. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So not, not like a, not a nefarious virus, not a, you know, some sort of uh, damaging code, just like, uh, like, some good old fashioned, like, I don't know, hypnosis, it sounds like. Just like hearing it over and over, you know? Self help. Yeah, well, I'd say I said what I said. <laughs> so, do I, am, is this like playing audio? How do I know that it's like. Uh, so, you can see uh, that there is an audio file. And if you play it or get a text transcription, you can get either one. You can see the text that is that is looping. Um, I just got to make a face at it. Like, what is this? <laughs> like, this isn't. Very silent. Oh, do the thing. What are you hearing? What's she hearing? Oh, what you want I... me to? Oh. oh, yeah. All right. Uh, oh, no. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hold on. This one has a sound on it, and I didn't realize that when I pushed the button. Some of your voice mods' voices will come with background noises that'll scare the hell out of you if you're not ready for them. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's a fun surprise when that happens. Uh, okay, so you hear uh, looping over and over uh, in this in this file. Let's see. Remember, today is an opportunity for a great day. Yesterday was a great day. Tomorrow will be a great day. Doors open when you have a great day. I ripped this out immediately. <laughs> I rip it out and just if it's a mini disc I'm strong enough I just want to snap it it's like oh no no absolutely not I love it um, could I have uh, the cast real quick uh, check your uh, our group uh, cast message real quick for something um, so, <laughs> so uh, yeah I mean it seems like it was sort of insinuating itself into some of Sila's like primary cognition code just because it was in there. It, it looks like that, well, <laughs> as far as you can tell, it should in theory purge itself now that the source is gone. Uh, so it, I mean, it shouldn't be anything more complicated than that. It, it, it was really, you know, from all, from all reports that you can tell, it really was just a, a sort of grading, uh, admittedly self-help, toxically positive, uh, you know, tape kind of thing. Oh, but knowing Sila as I do, I'm like, oh no, this this is not okay. Who put this here? Like, where did this come from? Um, does that waken Sila when I destroy the disc? Um, I mean, I think at this point you have been rooting around in subroutines long enough that uh, that yeah, Sila, you begin to to come to at this point. Well, that's unfortunate. What? My code isn't working. Your code works. I can put it as shopping cart. Yeah. Okay. Sila. Hmm. And I is she still? Are you still laying down, or have you sat up? She's sitting up, but she's just kind of like mellow. And I, I kind of lean over. So 
Sorry, look who am I? Invicta. Where are you? I would be able to tell you that, but someone turned off my power switch, so I'm not exactly sure where I'm waking up. You know that you were in Holland. Allegedly. And I like actually like kind of gently take her shoulders. Uh huh. And I I, I put my forehead to hers. Sila, you were scaring all of us. This wasn't you. This wasn't our captain. You were terrifying us. Please tell me that you're back to yourself. Before Sila has a chance to answer, something happens simultaneously here at the university and also back at Invicta's parents' house. At that moment, as Sila is about to describe whether or not she is back to her old self, the doors of the lab and the doors of Invicta's parents' house <laughs> burst open and torch agents uh, in full uniforms hurry in to find the five of you. Uh, and when they see you, uh, I lie, they head for you and hand you uh, like a communication chip. Uh, and they hand one to you as well, Sila, actually seeing you, technically the captain. Uh, and the two of you have communication chits that as you take them, uh, begin to uh, transfer their, or begin to uh, speak their message, uh, which is that they have been ordered to return you and all things from your mission immediately to Torch HQ. This is a global security event. And that is where we will take a brief five minute break before we find out what is happening. Thanks for hanging out, y'all. Go take care of yourselves. We were going to try and keep this to a pretty tight five to seven. Uh, so go refill your waters, take a bio, and we will be back shortly.
Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for keeping that break nice and tight. Hope you got what you needed. We are back. There's some sort of global security event. Oh, no. All right. So uh, when last we left our friends, uh, they were being stormed by Torch. It's totally fine. Invicta's parents' house was stormed. The research lab uh, at the University at Privat Bay was stormed. It's totally fine. Um, as the commercial break ends and we uh, snap back to the show, we find our five uh, friends um are not alone you all uh now find yourselves back at uh torch hq uh you are standing outside uh of the main entrance uh surrounded by torch agents uh and of course major rafia is there as well the five of you have been pretty unceremoniously yanked into transports and taken back to HQ with assurances that, of course, everything is fine, you all are safe, but they need you back immediately. The thing that maybe made things a little more tense was that they insisted on bringing Invicta's parents along, too. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, they... Uh... They told you, Ilai, actually, when they came in, uh, Doring and Ikemba and Ilai, they very quickly and very obviously scanned the three of you. And Ilai, they lingered on you and requested the device uh, be turned over. I don't know if you agreed to that or not. Uh, I'm going to look at Ikemba first, just like a, a knowing glance. Be mm -hmm. like, are we... Are we... Uh, I'm not sure we're handing them anything, but I'm also concerned. Did, did they come in, like, did they feel like they came in hot? They came in a little hot. They didn't yeah. break down the door, but they also, like, opened it themselves. Also, are are they keeping an eye on, is, is there a handful, like, how many would you say there are? Uh, I think there were three at the house and three at the university. Would it would it would it feel accurate to say they're keeping an eye on each of us? I have been playing with this pen since we came back, not realizing that it was an uncapped felt tip. I'm covered in ink. It's hey. fine. Um, <laughs> Uh, they, no, I, they're not, like, they're, no, they're not. They definitely have an eye to eye lie when they figure out that they're carrying the device. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're, no, they're not, like, I don't think they're expecting you to do a runner or anything like that, no. Cool. That helps. Yeah. Good. I, I don't want to have to shoot someone in front of the high and all's parents. <laughs> I just met them. It's hell I, of an intro. I talk, I talk about shooting people, so, like, it's not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you all continued that pow, conversation, pow. and it was like eventually okay. But <laughs> we'll touch and go. Um, so, I like we we handed over the device. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Not not everybody going. Nope. Nope. No. Okay, uh, that's <laughs> fine, um, and in fact, that's great uh, because then what the three of them say is, uh, "We will. That's uh, fine. We will need you to uh, stay with us. We will escort you as we return to Porch." And of course, everyone here that has been in proximity to the device, and that's when they look at Invictus parents, uh, will also be uh, coming along. Ah, uh, that's going to be fun to explain to. In you, you have to explain it to Invicta, not me. That's definitely. I'm. I'm uh, really that's either. really funny. Let's see that's if this person you. knows Invicta. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Let's see. Oh no. Oops. Nope. This is going to be in this one. Well, uh, <laughs> they, I got two successes. So they do. They are familiar with Invicta, uh, and that Torchation goes. Oh, I think I'll leave that to Major Rufia. <laughs> Oh no, not you taking my parents. <laughs> mm, I believe um, if Invicta is going to meet us there, you may have to explain this to her faster than Major Rafia. That's true. Uh, this salon, it's a Salonsi agent uh, that has been talking to you, and you watch as like some of his leaves like curl up on themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I look over at um, Doring and I'm like, are you taking notes? This is one of, the, I think this is one of the note times, right? This, this is, is what not, this is actually pretty accurate to what I assumed you all would do in a circumstance. I ran oh, simulations. Goodness. This is still going with my data. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> at least you're predictable in your unpredictability. They I was immediately like, I would love to see your data. <laughs> I... Mm. 
we can talk about the data's cheese recommendations another time. Cheese's data, cheese and data are two different things. I, I want the data. This seems lovely. Dorning's gonna blow your mind and combine data and cheese, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Kemba will eat said cheese. Yeah, I mean, I know. It's like recommendations based on a Kemba's different tastes by, with different locations in the world. He has a cheese process. sommelier for you on his data pad. No doubt. Get ready. How else are you going to get to a Kemba? Like, <laughs> Lego. Like, Sally needs, Sally needs information. Eli needs solace. Yeah, and Victor just needs violence. So like, you give her like I don't know, wow. give her a, give her a just, blade or a fighting pit. Way to stereotype me! Wow, I, I just, it's, 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 is it wrong though? <laughs> well, now wait a minute. To be fair, like, the stereotype would have been a nerdy engineer. Hmm. Anyway, you right. Mm. What happened was, I'm, <laughs> man, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood Ooh. right now. So right? anyway, like, they take you back to Torch. These um, silly Torch agents. All right, well, this oh. is actually turning out to be way funnier than I thought. So let's now cut to you all being in the transport together. Uh, it is, it's not a prison transport, but it sure does feel extra secure. Um, all six of the torch agents that came to get the two groups of you are there, as well as the five of you and Invictus' two parents. There is oh. a brief tense silence as you all uh, begin to head off. And then I assume the silence is quickly broken. Go. Oh, I walk over to my parents and I'm like, did they hurt you? Hurt me? Oh no, they've been nothing but absolutely excellently polite. Oh, not my to both, friends. To both them. me and your mother. Not my friends. Oh. The Asians. No, we just thought. Well, I, I, um, no, but you know, I mean, your mother and I have been around the block. It's not the first time we've been taken to a black site by government agents. Mm -hmm. It's a story for later. It doesn't matter. That seems definitely like a story I'd like to hear. You've got explaining to do once we're done at Torch. <laughs> Because these uh, are not the stories you told me as a young cub. Your mother is studiously saying nothing. Um, <laughs> and I just kind of I just kind of look at her and like flatten my ears. You know, she does not I, look at you. I know that look or that lack of a look. <laughs> oh, the lack of. <laughs> How I, black did things get at the black site? Um at that point, uh her mother immediately yeah i gotta keep talking because otherwise i'm gonna die uh her mother j looks very quickly over to you i lie and then turns to invict and says it's so nice to see you and gives you a hug uh and i just i just like it's nice to see you too mother and i like remove her arms very gently and i just pat her fur yeah which oh sorry which, sorry i forgot sorry which no which which one showed up at the house she leans over it now, Invicta, dear. I I asked you a question, mother. Okay, but let's you know, let's I, keep it even. Oh, all right, th that one. All right, all right. I, I, you are a grown high and old now, and it's not my place to tell you when you should and shouldn't dismember people for doing their job. And I just walk over the ones that came over to my mother's house or to my parents' house. Mm -hmm. am I, and I'm am I since one is a salon, am I bigger than them? Uh, yeah, I don't think any of them, I don't, uh, none of the ones that went to your house and your parents or your parents' house are high and old. So yeah, you're taller than most of them. And I just kind of <laughs> lean over the one that the salon, see, <laughs> she pointed out. Hey. <clears throat> uh, he tries to like stay tall and not shrink under your gaze from above. It's sort of successful. <laughs> Was it Kemba clearing his throat to get my attention? Uh, it Kemba was definitely wanting to just kind of like <laughs> smooth his way in, kind of between and Victor. I know. I put an arm up. No. It's just like, mm, I understand. Mm. I feel like we should probably get information instead of removing names. We might want to know who I try to cut off one man's why. arm. One, that and you'll a, never let me forget it. That was like three hours ago, if that. It was, it was not very long ago that you tried to take that man's arm. We had an hour to explore the city and eat cheese. I didn't even get to eat much of the cheese because they burst in. Trust and believe me when I say I am frustrated as well, but this is also a different situation because your mother is involved and I understand completely if you feel like having salad. 
what I would request is asking them where their orders came from before anything else. That may just, that's just what I would do in the situation. Just, Not that it matters. I just got to bear my fangs at Kemba and I was like, do I look like I eat salad to you? Ruffage is good for all. Just throwing it out there. I will go sit beside Doring and see if they're writing notes. Hundred percent. It's more. It's yeah. more like um. I'm just doing one of these with my pack on, on, on like my chin, wow. just like looking and looking over at Invicta and Akemba and looking back at Doring in the notes. <laughs> He's definitely taking data on common responses. It's almost like feeding information into an AI to pre-generate what's going to happen next. Wow. There's an episode mm. of Dogs in Space about that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> episode of what? Dogs in Space? Doesn't matter. Uh, hmm. So, you all eventually... Oh, did you have a question for this man, Invicta? Sorry, I got sidetracked. I did, but then everyone tried to keep me from like turning him into like a Caesar Not salad. Me. Yes. The camera's like, yes, no Caesar salad shall prosper in this particular vehicle, hopefully, for the time being. Also, they work for us and we work for them. They are people of the same division. We could just wait to see what they do. Um, my I outrank them. That's probably true, but you probably don't outrank the person that gave them their instructions. Do not shoot the messenger for the captain's orders. Otherwise, I didn't say anything about shooting. That's your thing. That is a figure of... Oh, God. To be clear, I didn't give any orders. This has nothing to... Do. How have you all survived? If you find out, let me know. Yes. The answer the, to your question is yes. The, the, the idea is the people that have come here, the torch... Members are also members of Torch. It is someone above all of us has designated they needed to come and retrieve something of agency. Well, they could now, have done that without breaking into people's houses and rounding us up. Like all things considered, I have no doubt that many of you would make the same choice without consideration for those people in the same way if you were ordered to do something of agency. No. The data no. says otherwise, considering you tried to take a man's arm. But that it is was behind us. Dangerous. It, okay. Shade. The, a man you, is not more dangerous than a door. And doors can be replaced in an easier fashion than limbs. That said, we could inquire with fellow torch members in honor and kindness if they would be willing to share with us what was going on so we could act more cohesively your dad Invicta has just been like enraptured by Doring and just has been nodding along and without thinking when Doring finishes go well that makes a lot of sense Invicta don't you think oh god don't do that <laughs> yeah, exactly. And she just looked, she like just turns her head and looks at her father. Father. Invicta? Invictus. Invicta. Uh, oh, uh, your cousin? I don't think he's here. Is he coming? Oh, is he going to be there too? I get a snack and crunch it. <laughs> her mom asks for one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you guys go, father, isn't that still your name? Oh, yeah, but I'm father. Not right now. Oh, you're, you're upset not. with me. Oh, I should yes. have kept it. Yeah. Yep, I got yeah. it. I got it. I yeah. got it. Sorry. Yep, grown. Mm. I know. Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, <sighs> it is not long after. <laughs> not, oh, sorry. One, one more time. Do you have a question for this guard? <laughs> I was going to, but at this rate, I'm never going to get to ask this question. <laughs> I actually like turn around and look at Sila. Mm hmm. Sila, don't you find this odd? That Torch brought us into Torch. Uh, 
Yes. You're not going to say anything. No. Okay, yes. well. Are you going to say something before we get to court? Could you excuse me for a moment? We're Where on a going? ship. Where are you going? Into the corner. Oh. I just need some personal space. Oh, boy. Uh, as Sila heads to the corner and gets, uh, gets herself settled uh, into a sulky little uh, solo spot, uh, you all arrive at Torch and are immediately just sort of very, no talking, very quickly escorted uh, into uh, the headquarters, taken down several levels. Rufia's office is up, as we may recall. You are taken in an elevator in the downward direction. Uh, and eventually led through some hallways uh, and into a pretty bare uh, sci-fi concrete room uh, where there is a table and enough chairs for the seven of you, uh, the guards will not be remaining, and an eighth chair that, surprise, surprise, holds Major Rafia uh, awaiting you all. And she stands, and the first thing she does is decidedly not... Uh, command structure of her. She tries so hard so often with you all uh, to like stay, you know, professional and stuff. But she stands up and the first thing she does is put her hands up uh, and and she immediately says, says, I understand, stand, 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 stand. Please understand that we have to speak. There are good reasons. I apologize for the abrupt, 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 abruptness with which you were brought back to HQQQ. Rufia. Why did you So Silent is, is gonna be the last one through the door, making her way, and she's gonna like she's sees that Major Rafia is talking. Huh. And so she kinda like notices everyone is engaged and oh, no. she pulls down and there's an extra chip. And so she waits for them to turn around and discreetly like pops her like peace and tranquility back in. <laughs> I knew there was a backup. I wasn't sure how quickly it was going to get put in. Uh, okay. You yeah. know me too well, Deeds. I mean, uh, okay, great. So Sila is in accord with you in that. Invicta, however, you were saying something to Rafia. Uh, a, a good, a good solid question, if I'm not mistaken. I don't even address her as major. I'm just like, Rafia. Yeah. Why did you have to involve my parents and i'm giving her like that dead stare of like this better be a real good answer we will have a full briefing briefing as soon as we are able but you must understand that that's no. technology and she points towards uh towards Eli, who still has the, the mice um, um that technology has the potential to completely ruin any and all defenses, security, 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 security measures, and other implements that we have in place to protect this planet from both the Hapalocks, Hapalocks, and the land. Dip, 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 dip. You couldn't just tell us return immediately. So why couldn't you just send for that instead of abruptly sending for all of us? It is unclear yet at this moment to torch how many of it is unclear at this moment to torch who of you. And she takes a moment to take in all seven of you. Have knowledge of the workings of this device. The knowledge of this device and the way that it functions cannot leave this building. And I just kind of, I actually so like kind leave of the building now that you have it. I'm. I'm, I'm unclear what exactly the purpose of dragging not only us, but Invicta's parents here serves. Go ahead, Invicta. Um, I start to actually advance on Rafia because now I'm just angry. Yeah, totally. She, uh, she is one of the few folks that you know uh, and interact with on a regular basis that won't back down from you. She knows what you're capable of, uh, but she has... Uh, too much pride and steel for that. Uh, so she doesn't uh, back down, but she understands the situation, certainly. So I just, like, I'm just, we didn't even get a chance to figure out what it is, let alone how it works. We could have just sent it back to Torch if you needed to know that badly. It has not been a whole day, Rafia. 
And yet you are aware that the site that we sent you to was, was, was also attacked by landed crews. More are en route, presumably to find that device. No, no, Invicta, security was of paramount importance, and I apologize for inconveniencing Sing Sing, your parents, but it was necessary that you seven and the knowledge of this device be secured, secured, secured in this facility immediately, Lee, Lee. That's she said, of, mm, no, 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 go ahead. Oh, no, Invicta just kind of starts stalking around the room, muttering and like, really like, I'm very unladylike high and all. <laughs> I love it. Way. I love it. Um, yeah, she uh, she sits back down, but she doesn't say anything. She like sees that happening, wants to give you a minute. Um, anybody else? Uh, anything that I should be aware of? Sila was asking something. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Why? Well, like she kind of answered that right. Why here and why not just the device? And basically, her answer was, you know, apparently Torch feels that this device is powerful enough and dangerous enough to security on the planet that any knowledge of it couldn't be left outside HQ, at least until some things are sorted out. Dor Doring is going to ask kind of a rhetorical question to confirm sure. that it would there was a hope of not spreading too much information through channels that were not entirely secure and mm -hmm. to ensure that if there were witnesses to something that all of us could be collected in the same place, and he like asks a question mark, basically intentionally, right? <laughs> hoping <laughs> to say this in layman's terms that yeah, yeah, yeah. Rafia is not. Thank you, Doring. Yes, yes, yes. That is essentially the long and short of it. Additionally, however, the fact that the five of you, as well as several of the Bidon tube, 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 tube surveyors, were transported several hundred kilometers several thousand kilometers in an instant meant that that technology could be used to 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 bypass security nets and other forms of defense here on the planet should the landed or the hapalox locks locks get their hands on it he'll, he'll hence, also mention the like old structures leading towards the crevice area that he saw Oh, that's news to her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's new. And she sort of takes a moment. You all have all, even you, Doting, have seen her because you've, you've worked with her before. I've seen her. She, um, much like her, if you remember, this is way back in season one. I don't know what we've talked about it since then. But she does have a, a, a cracked faceplate that she keeps uh, and that she particularly likes. Most months, again, he will, you know, embroider their, uh, their injuries and such. But she, she keeps this and... Um, and there's also a, a sort of tick when she is uh, recording information or communicating so silently through her processors. And she sort of does that. There are a few little clicks as she files that information away, Doring. Uh, and she, she says... Um, Important information. Did you happen to get samples and or, 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 or visual rec recordings of the items? I did take pictures of all... Great, yeah, and she uh, she takes another you know another few clicks and she sends those uh, she sends those somewhere uh, with a promise that they will be uh, looked into. Uh, but once once things have you know she goes through that once things have settled, Invicta is probably still upset, but at least the long and short of it has been out. She sort of looks to you all and sees if there's a questions. I lie. Interesting. Um, you seem very concerned about the people who know uh, how to use this object or have used this object. But I'm curious as to why the three Botantu are not here with us. Um, as much as all of this has been very fun for me. Um, all nine Botantu too, have been brought to Torch HQ. The two injured are currently unconscious in our infirmary. Re. The other seven are being held currently, treated well, provided with comfortable lodging and food. We will be briefing them, debriefing them after we have spoken, spoken, spoken with you. And the landed that was also. She is silent for a, for like longer than she probably needed to be when you mention uh, when you ask about the landed. But eventually, uh, she looks right at you, Eli, and she says, "Says they are also few." Why the pause? Uh, anyone else here think that pause was um, strange? It was Isn't very. I don't necessarily find it strange. I think it may be 
information that is above our pay grade, and Rafia may have almost slipped in a way that superiors may not appreciate. Are you at least writing that one down, or is it just us? Just us, or? It's just you. I have uh, with her before. I know how she works. You are the outliers, and I am letting. You will, the five of you will be briefed upon everything to do with what we have learned so far when the moment is appropriate. Rit, rit, rit. Until then, unfortunately, Doring is correct. There are certain details about our ongoing operations and research into the, the, the device that must be kept at a high classified level. I have a question. Thus far, I feel I've probably been the most involved in the process of understanding this, which I still really know nothing. Could you not have asked? I'm right here. Would you like to know anything? Is there anything I can help you with? Uh, where, in fact, where are the scientists that would love to know more about the device? I can give information where possible, but holding me here is going to be a quite intriguing concept, Major. So, who do I need to debrief on what I've learned? She allows herself to look a little apologetic in your direction, uh, Ikemba, as she says. It was all my apologies, Ikemba. Uh, it was always our intention to debrief the five of you for any information that you have and then involve any and all of you who wish in the research, ongoing research about the device. You were brought to this site, site, site first because there was some explaining that needed to be done, done, and apologies that needed to be given. For example, 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 example. Invicta. On behalf of Torch, I apologize for the surprise way in which you and your family were brought here. Invictus and Solis, I apologize on behalf of all of Torch for taking you from your homes. It is not an action that Torch takes lightly, but as I have come to understand, stand, stand, the two of you may be familiar with the necessity. And, uh, well, I'm not going to venture a guess to how Invicta feels about this, but both of her parents just sort of nod at that from Rufia uh, and seem, seem perfectly mollified. Uh, but she continues and she says, yes. So now that we are all on the same, 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 same page, if you all are ready, we can begin the research project and debriefing of your experiences with the device. Uh, uh -huh. All right. Sure. Okay. Uh, you all are taken upstairs uh, and can, and you know, are taken into uh, the labs. Eli, you will eventually have to at least uh, uh, surrender the item for analysis to the computers and the and the and the uh, equipment, if not somewhere. I give it to Akimba. Uh, when they say surrender, I give it to Akimba, and I'm let Akimba decide what. Okay. Great. Go. Yeah. Um, Invicta, real quick before we go upstairs and start dealing with the actual research, both of your parents uh, are taken to be debriefed, uh, and then, and you know, Rafia sort of like tells you that from what she now understands, based on what the what everyone told, what the agents told her, they didn't even see the device at the house, right? I never took it out until the agents arrived. So they, as soon as they're debriefed and it's clear that they don't know anything about it, they're going to be really, they're going to be sent back. Uh, you know, taken back to their home, the, to the door will be, uh, you know, if it was in any way damaged, it will be repaired, that sort of stuff. And uh, they seem, for what it's worth, your parents seem totally happy to answer the questions. Um, do I get to see them after they're debriefed? Uh, yeah, they'll, uh, you're, in fact, your dad uh, is the one who's like, well, actually, could we maybe just stick around for a little so we can see Invicta before we, ha I mean, I certainly don't want to interrupt anything, but, you know, if there's a few minutes that we could have to, your dad just, you know, goes. Uh, so yeah, they'll be around, uh, and their transport, you know, they'll take the, <laughs> it's the least Torch can do to send them a transport whenever they desire. So yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, I, do we still have our old quarters at Torch or no? I, I assume so. Yeah. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. Um, I, I, as long as no one stops me, I take them to my old quarters. Yeah. I'm like, hopefully this won't take long. 
And I promise, Dad, I will try to not take anyone's head off or arm. Just feels like a troublesome career move, but you know, you do, you, you know best. Well, if I take someone's head off, it'll be my last career move. I'm pretty <laughs> sure of it. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. And I haven't forgotten what you said on the transport about black tights. We'll see you soon, dear. And I just, <laughs> I just wave at them. I'm like, stay out of my drawers. <laughs> Your mom's are No, she isn't. Uh, all right, great. So they, you know, they have their little debriefing or whatever. You all are set to uh, help out with research. Um, and you have a couple of things working for you at this point. So, so what we're going to do here is you have Torch's resources, right? Clearly, this is priority one for Torch. Um, there are not going to be a ton of other people helping you. Some super high clearance uh, scientists and such will be also in the lab with you all. But this is, uh, this is a big deal for Torch. So uh, resources are not an obstacle. You have access to any and all of the equipment that is here. Um, and what I am curious is about is what each of you would like to either do to learn about it or what you might like to try and focus on figuring out about it. You're, you've got some time. This is a little bit of a timey-wimey section because this kind of analysis to something this, it's a weird word to use in a sci-fi setting, but like alien to you all, right, uh, is going to take some time. So we're going to sort of zhuzh the next probably days uh, into this little montage here. So, well, yeah, what's the plan? Uh, and you all can do indiv different individual things with it. You work together however you want. You've got, like I said, you've got time and, and equipment at your disposal. Uh, we do a montage? I mean, we could do a little research montage as you all tell me how you're, what you're trying to learn about it and what you're doing with it. Yeah. Here, everybody just like, we need a montage. <laughs> so what's the first the first clip that we see uh, in this in this studying the object? Yeah, I like go. Uh, I know. Uh, for me, I think I'm going to talk to the group and then see well, obviously the group consents. Uh, I'm going to see if we can get. Um, uh, I can't remember the character's name, but oh. we can get their help. Um, Whose character? <sighs> My brain is not working. Do you you don't mean Koza, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so see if we can get their assist because you said all of the resources oh. is available to us. Yeah, I mean, here's the truth. I think like Koza takes her time because she's in the middle of something that's very exciting to her on the sphere. But yeah, I can't imagine she would say no to trying to tinker with a new piece of technology. Oh. Hold on. Hey. Hey. What's okay. Up? So, when in, when she when Kosa left, uh huh. I Silo was feeling some type of way, and during my upgrades for the season, oh, no. and so now she took on some of the fixer. Oh yeah. During the upgrade, so a fixer can spend a relatively short amount of time examining a piece of equipment or technology and gain an understanding of what it does and how to use it. Difficulties in appraising or analyzing a machine are reduced by two. If reduced to zero, they know everything about the item from the date of construction to the manufacturer to the intended purpose and any recalls it may be a part of. Any recalls? Did somebody Jeez. write that in this document? That's somebody hilarious. wrote that. That's so recalls, funny. I love it. <laughs> okay, yeah, absolutely. You can do that. And, you know, and so, okay, so I think uh, I, the first shot of the montage, right, uh, is I like getting uh, Koza to come up. Uh, and be a part of all of this. Uh, and then the next clip that we see, and, and, and Ayla, we can do some research on your part in a minute, but the next clip that we see then is Sila uh, and and uh, Koza sort of like uh, there together working on the same thing and like doing the same thing at the same time. And Koza points at you. Yeah. I just want to say that yeah. Sila is dressed like Tony Stark when he was in captivity working on the suit and yeah. has on like a uh, like sleeveless tank top sleeveless ribbed tank top and cargo pants gross and i'm just saying she's like sitting there and she's got the little thing pulled up so she's doing like the the little throw of the blue computer screen <laughs> totally like looking at kosa like trying to like 
Koza, Koza is uh, using that spider back. Koza hasn't walked in weeks on her legs. It's just that spider backpack. Uh, so she like one of the legs like nods at, or like waves at you as you're doing it, and, like gives you a thumbs up. Um, while we are, I, this montage is delightful. I, I should say there is a mechanical bent to this. You all should put together research pools uh, and you like put them together, roll them up, count your uh, successes. Uh, and I'm actually going to do a, we're going to add up all of the group successes uh, and give it one big total uh, that I will then meet out information on. Uh, who's got the next montage scene though? You can you can put a hold on your dice roll. And, yeah, you got okay. it, uh, Doring? Uh, you can, but uh, no, Doring first. Okay. Doring, Doring was going to try to see if they could get samples of any soil or sediment from the device yeah, and then okay. see where that stuff was commonly found on planet to at least like come up with a couple different regions that it might be relevant to or if it's one of those things where it's like this is a metal that is commonly found so far down but then it's like who would have the resources to go that far down mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and i was just going to lean into like um survival so like understanding of the environment to survive yeah. so on so yeah on. absolutely yeah so doting you know the next scene of the montage is doting picking tiny little pieces right of like dirt and soil out of the inner workings from where it fell on the ground in the cave yeah. uh and from and from deeper in where you can tell like it's some sediment from longer ago you're taking yeah. little samples of the metal casing of it all of that sort of stuff absolutely love it right. uh ikemba shall we head to your little scene that scene lit next yes Ikemba is working with the scientists and trying to figure out how it functions. Because uh -huh. Ikemba definitely wants to know if it's a thing that he can assist with of helping them to understand how to get it from get the teleportation functional. Yeah. Because his thing is, how does the energy work? How is it getting energy? That is his, that oh, that's he's, interesting. He's the blown power away by source. that. He's like, yeah, yeah, how yeah. is this being powered? It's so small. To be able to take the whole team somewhere else, he is just needing to know. Because in his mind, he could have one of these set up in like a storage room that's full of medical supplies. Of just like mm -hmm. if he needs to get somewhere to help somebody, yeah. how does how is he able to better assist a, a saving someone's life by using this technology to get back to a specific place? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're you are starting from where you are. You're like you already have some information, right? You know how to activate it. You figured out that it was on a cooldown timer for a little while. So you start there, right? And so I think we see a Kemba in particular making use of those same bio priest abilities that he used to activate it in the first place, uh, and have it, you know, and surrounded by a, a team of researchers who are taking notes every with every little you know algorithm switch and click you do and all of that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Invicta, do we have a do we have an idea for yours? Um, Invicta is basically just she wants to take it apart if she can, but obviously that doesn't work. So she's yeah. probing it, she's scanning it, trying to figure out the energy, kind of like a Kemba. Okay, but she's also like low key angry at this thing because <laughs> we got dragged out to the Batantu. It's caused all these problems. But she's like done everything except pick it up and bite it to figure it out. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I think the end of your montage is just like a supremely, or your montage scene rather, is a supremely frustrated Victor like picking it up and going, ah, ah, no, okay. And like almost biting. No, okay, I'm going to put it down. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Eli and Sila, was there anything more specific you wanted to toss into the montage? No is okay, because we got little scenelets from the two of you. Uh, uh, but if there's anything specific you want to tell me, and then we'll get to these pools. Unless this thing has any sort of glyphs or languages that we don't know, then Eli can't really help unless this thing runs off the energy of drama. And if it doesn't, then also <laughs> Eli can't help with it. Amazing. Um, no, there's no writing on it. And I think at this point, like the analysis of its um command functions and code and that is still real basic like binary math stuff i don't think it's language yet um mm -hmm. yeah okay so yeah in that, in that case i'm just gonna meditate and uh yeah. you know for the absence of drama so that i can participate <laughs> in more drama once of course everything you're ready done. that's right that's right uh sila anything in particular 
No. Great. Uh, so I'm going to come around and get your numbers of successes. But here's a surprise. You can all now roll a D12 and you add it now? if it's a Yes. Did Doring do anything? Yeah, Doring is doing soil samples and material samples. Got it. I'm, yeah. I so miss that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, you can roll a D12. That is your utility die from Torch Resources. Uh, so you can yeah, have what a D12 for... Uh, it, yeah, yes, correct. Because um, this is, like I said... Sorry I ever received. It's the, uh oh did you roll a one? No, I'm saying it's the worst sorry I've ever received. Oh. Torch is just like, oh, here. We're going to throw, like... Me. How about how about a raise? How about a raise? Yeah. I mean, listen, you're provided for. I, um, I, yeah. So am I rolling anything or no, because I'm contributing nothing? Oh, no, no, no. You totally... I assume that you... <laughs> I mean... Unless you're telling me that you participate in none of the research, uh, you can still certainly roll. It's just about whether or not. I will, I will, I can do, like, yes, yeah. drama's great. I love drama. But they, they also like taking care of people. So, you yeah. know, if anyone needs snacks or massages or some sort of thing to kind of get the brain juices going, uh, that's what I, I provide. I like that. Build your pool around that, around caring for them as they research and work long hours into the night or whatever. I like that because I do want everybody to participate. Um, cool. Because because the the deal is very high. Uh, <laughs> so I need all five of you uh, contributing. All right, let's go around real quick and let me get these numbers. Let's start with Doting. How many successes? Four. Four. Uh, Ikemba. Also four. All right. Let's go. I'm gonna have the park. Sila. You still working on yours? Three. Three, okay. Uh, Invicta. Three. And I lie. I know I just gave you yours. <laughs> Take just a second. Two. All right. Four, eight, ten, sixteen altogether. We love to see it. Okay. Um, it takes the better part of a week of really just diving into this thing because at every turn, just when you think it starts to feel familiar something completely bananas off the wall left field pops up in your research that just doesn't make any sense. Like, oh yeah, this is sort of how we code for, oh, nope, completely different. So it takes a while, it takes some process, but here's what we find out. Doting, we'll start with your materials analysis. Mm -hmm. You, two main interesting things that you discover from yours one is that the materials, we talked about how they probably are native to Vitoa, mm -hmm. but what you find is that a lot of them are, like you said, pretty far down. Like to find any quantity of these minerals and metals, uh, you got to go pretty deep. Mm -hmm. And I will say, because... Uh, with four successes, I will say, so that tells you one of two things. One, whoever built this has a ton of resources to dig deep. Mm -hmm. Or whoever built this built it so long ago that these materials were higher up in the, like, in the shelf, yeah. right? One of the two. The other thing, like I said, you start to figure something out and then it goes off in left field. The other thing that you notice is that the, the samples, the, the for better, lack of a better term, the soil samples that you pull from within... Mm -hmm. Definitely not from Vitoa. Hate that. Nope. Um, e e and, and I mean, you can run through a list of like planetary database, whatever, to try and see if a match comes up. That will take time. Yeah. Uh, but like not Vitoan soil. Nah. Um, Ikemba, you, uh, particularly the power issue that you have, you go through everything you can think of. There is no nuke, there's no fusion, there's no fission, there's no combustion, there's no sci fi thing. I don't know. I ran out of forms of power. You're good. <laughs> I get it. Um, and finally, you are, you know, sort of taking whatever readings from this thing. And you notice it's almost so slight as to not be perceptible, but you notice that the temperature readings around the device are ever so slightly. I mean, if we're talking like earth science, like a few degrees Kel or sorry, a few Kelvin colder than the surrounding air. 
And eventually what you realize is that at least right now, this this thing, and, and it's it's not in cooldown mode anymore, but it's not active. You can activate it if you want, I suppose, but it's not currently active when I'm talking about this. Um, it seems to be pulling literally thermal energy from the air to maintain its like idle state. The chem is in on that. The research begins immediately. And so we're going to take that now and head to what Invicta and kind of Sila were researching, which now that you know this, right, you do have, uh, and, and Rafia, I will say, also sort of uh, po pokes her head in and, and uh, helps with this as well. Um, it occurs to you that if there are more of these things around, this might be a way, particularly if they're active, this might be a way to locate them. Because it is very the amount the temper differ, the temperature differential is very specific, and Ikemba, you can since you know how to activate it and this and that right you can sort of get it to power up. Um, I will say you can you can activate the uh, you can activate the portal with no problem. Um, it remains for several hours without closing. Presumably none of, no one goes through it. I'm going to go ahead and make that assumption, at least during this research phase. Uh, and it actually remains active for several hours. And so you're able to get like that sets things, the air at a certain temperature, right? Idle state sets it at a very specific temperature. And those two temperatures do not fluctuate when you have them in those states. And so you can use that to search for areas that don't match their surrounding temperature, but do match those specific meters, right? Uh, so that's a thing that you all can set in motion. Where's my list? There we go. Um, the other thing that you, and this is, this is definitely a joint project because a little bit of this is uh, uh, organic material that Doting found in the inner soil samples. Some of it is uh, just happenstance as Akemba uh, is, is trying to find more about its control functions. But what you eventually figure out is that the portal did not remain open for hours in the cave. In fact, once you all started going through it, it started clicking and, and presumably counting down because eventually it closed up again. This device seems to be keyed to some kind of DNA. It is keyed to essentially begin the shutdown process of closing the portal once a particular set of DNA sequences pass through the portal. And what's even weirder is those DNA sequences match that fur Invicta found. Mm. And the last bit of information that eventually comes to you all, and it just, it takes a while to process to really get an accurate reading, is a sort of carbon dating of this thing. And in case there was any doubt at this point, this device is thousands and thousands of years old. Predates the arrival of the Musalians. Predates Halins. Is old. That's where mm. we're going to leave it for this week. Wow. Well, hey, look, it's not a cliffhanger. Listen, I don't ever want to hear about a cliffhanger again. Thanks so much for hanging out, y'all. This has been a, a, an interesting little episode. We met Invicta's parents. We got them arrested. We learned <laughs> about the device. It's great. I love it. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Uh, thank the five of you for playing today and helping me tell the story. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's go around real quick. We are at about one minute to nine, so let's keep them quick. But let's go around and let folks know uh, who we are and how they can find us and support us between now and next week's episode. Let us start, please, with DJ. Oh, hi. I'm DJ. I play Akimba. We'll say the Bio Priest. Our pronouns are he, him. I am pretty much everywhere at DJ Night. You find me there on Twitch, typically. I tweet. I Insta. I TikTok. I do all the things. Um, that's pretty much it. You know where we're at. You, you know where I'm at. You're here. I'm going to shut up. You know. <laughs> Michael. 
I am, yes, I'm not muted. So, hello, yes, my name is Michael Singular II. I go by Michael Kurtz Everywhere. Uh, I uh, do voiceover work. I do D&D stuff. I do Magic Gathering stuff. Uh, cool thing that just dropped Humans of Magic, where I get interviewed for two hours by a wonderful interviewer. His name's James. He, he is amazing. Probably one of the best interviewers out there to do it. So uh, go and check that out. It's like two hours long. So if you really want to deep dive on me, check that out. I'm also in the Nuts and Bolts podcast, a podcast about magic that drops every week. We just released an episode today. And I'm also part of the Fae Forge Academy. We have a new episode of that D&D uh, setting that takes place in, mostly in the Fae Wild, but we're not anymore. Anyway, that releases every Friday. You can go check me out there. I do things. Check out my Michael Critz for anything else that I will be doing. Sick. That's it. <laughs> Moving on over to Christina. Hi. My name is Christina Ariel. You can find me at Christina Ariel on Twitter and all the other things, except for the sites where people took my name, which is really weird because it's a really specific name. But it's Christina Ariel, K R Y S T I N A A R I E L L E. Oh, so please watch Headless by Shipwreck Comedy. It's really hilarious. And we just had episode nine. It's myself, the Shipwreck Comedy team, Mary Kate Wiles, John Persaud, Janae Persaud, Gabe Greenspan, who is one of the most ask Gabe hilarious. Other Gabe, Gabe one, Gabe two. Ask Gabe is one of the most hilarious people in the world. It's a really fun show. We're really proud of it. We worked really hard to raise the money to go into it. Oh, and also, if you're going to be in Pasadena, LA area, November 4th, we are actually doing a fall festival where you can come and watch Headless with the cast. I'm going to be doing tours as my character, Judy. There's going to be a Ferris wheel, and you can actually watch Headless. A Sleepy Hollow story in the town of Sleepy Hollow set that we use to make the show. And it's going to be really fun. So I hope that you guys will do that. Also, if you know me, you know that I love Bravo TV. And so I'm going to be on the Who Asked Me podcast talking about the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion part three. And also about the Married to Medicine reunion and other various Bravo properties. So if you like that, go and listen where your podcasts are found to hear me and Giselle Brooks talk all kind of stuff. And Potomac is back. So watch Real Housewives of Potomac. It has nothing to do with me, but it's just good. We love a media wreck during our outros. Gabe. Hi, I'm Gabe Hicks. Gabe James Games across all platforms. I do a bunch of stuff. I've got a Kickstarter up. You can check it out on my Twitter. Also, Gabe, Gabe Greenspan's dope. He's one of those dudes where, like, he's handsome and a decent person, and it kind of pisses me off that his name is Gabe. Like, let me have something. Pick one or the other. That's fantastic. I love it. Tanya. <laughs> I had to make sure I wasn't muted. Uh, uh -huh. Hi, I'm Cypher. I'm your high and old blade keeper here on Sundays, though. I'm the DM of season 14 of Rivers Waterdeep. We have an Indiegogo running to keep our show afloat for two more seasons. You can tell our epic story. We want to. Uh, Eugenio is also on the show. Um, basically, here and Sundays, because, you know, shout out to B Dave. Black Dice ended last week. Um, so tomorrow's gonna be real weird, y'all. Really is. It really is. Sorry <laughs> I might just text you. No, I might just text you at five. Be like, can we just get on a Zoom call? <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. I'm raising money for AM for Extra Life for Kids through AMD. I'm on part of AMD Red Team. Uh, I believe DJ, you're on AMD Red Team as well. I am. Um, and Friday. I almost forgot. Friday, as in two days from now, I will be in a. Charity game with B Dave, uh, Jenny D, Al Alicia Marie, who else? Jeremy Cobb from Three and a Half Black Half, Three and a Half Black Halflings. I messed up their name. Please don't murder me. Um, and Char for Waver White Crisis Center, their Canadian org. And uh, come throw money at us so you can make B Dave be even more terrible than he naturally is. He might throw Tia mad at us. I don't know. Uh, but Check Twitter's Waver Right Crisis Center, um, all of our socials. And uh, me, I just stream on my channel when I get technology to agree with me. So come and hang out. And I'm Eugenio, I'm DM Jazzy Hands on the internet, on Twitch and on Twitter. Uh, I am heading to Big Bad Con tomorrow. So if you're going to be in San Francisco at Big Bad Con, uh, I've got a couple of panels on Saturday uh, and I would love to say hello. I will be there for the weekend. Uh, I will, fingers crossed, and the uh, hotel internet don't rise. Uh, both Latia and I will be attending Rivals this week from uh, San Francisco. So hopefully we'll be there on Sunday with Tanya. Uh, Monday night, I'll be back on the Codename channel with episode 
three of Idol Champions presents Hunger of the Forgotten, uh, Hunger of the Far Realm, uh, with uh, as Kent, also from Rivals of Waterdeep. Uh, that of course also oh, oh, that of course uh, also starring uh, Urban Bohemian uh, as Virgil, uh, Anna Prosser as nope, here we go, Anna Prosser as Evelyn, Holly Conrad as Strix, and Tristan Falcone as Walnut with DM B Dave Walters. That's Monday night. Uh, Tuesday I'll be back streaming on my channel. Wednesday we're here, and I also have a podcast. The Last Refuge. We have two more. We just dropped an episode today. We got two more episodes left, and then we're going on our final hiatus before uh, we record our 10th and final season. The show's been going almost six years now, uh, and we're just about to wrap up. I'm really excited. So go check that out anywhere pods are cast. Uh, that's The Last Refuge, a D&D podcast. And that's me. Thanks, y'all, for being here. We'll see you next week, I think. Where are we headed now, Tanya? Um, I think game uses, because they are yeah. playing one of my favorite games, Vodka 3. Also, hey, can't, can't, yeah. Oh, don't do it. Don't you dare do it. No, stop. Don't. I'm do leaving. It. Do it. He knows what I was going to say. Dang. Y'all, go go watch. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Daddy. It's not oh. the same. We just need the clip. Wow, you even faded back in. <laughs> <laughs> and Brian's in the chat. Did it just get spicy? What is this? Yeah, what's going okay, on? So real quick concerned. before we go off air, you all have sure. to go and find the VOD of this week's Idol Champions Presents Hunger of the Far Realm because Urban Bohemian, playing Virgil, made a joke that was so... I don't even know what word to use to describe it, but it broke the entire rest of the cast and we had to go to break early. Perfection. So go check that out. It is That's right before break in the VOD, and it's amazing. And there's a clip. Oh, good. Thank you, Brian. Preparation. Uh, and I will grab Proper this clip so I can send it to all of you once we're done. All right, the raid's going. We're going to go see Afro Game Music. This is playing one of my absolute favorite Ooh. games, Mafia 3. And I uh, will see you in a week, y'all. Bye. Bye, y'all. Later.